Buenas tardes a todas y todos. Bienvenidos a este Good seminario. afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this uh, webinar on the management of public food services. It's a pleasure having uh, you with us. To begin uh, with this session, I'd like to give the floor to Daniela Godoy. She's a senior food security and nutrition policy officer for FAO Latin America and the Caribbean and the regional coordinator of the Sustainable Agri-Food System Initiative to provide healthy diets for the entire population. So, Daniela. Thank you, Sarah. Let me welcome everyone joining us in this session this uh, webinar towards a uh, public services uh, uh, with a more sustainable approach uh, or uh, organized by FAO for Latin America and the Caribbean. Let me greet all the organizations joining as the Colombian Institute of, uh, of uh, Family Wellbeing, the Nicaragua Tech, Sulma Fonseca, Maria Geralda, Catalina Giraldo, Stephen Fien, uh, Carolina Trivelli. Every day, millions of food rations are served uh, in state institutions such as the school, ca school cafeterias, hospitals, and penitentiaries, cafeterias of technological centers, among many others. Ensuring quality, nutrition, safety, and use is a huge challenge. And, and, and this is how today we want to talk about uh, a special aspect which opens up to the analyst possibilities, how to prevent and reduce food waste in these public food services. Uh, it is for a better efficiency in the use of public spending, improving the environment and eating habits, um, as well as reducing the environmental impact of these uh, wastes uh, year after year. The reduction of uh, of a food loss waste as part of the 2030 agenda and it's clear in the uh, SDG 12 in the sustainable food consumption and production. FAO globally and regionally has been focused on the third goal of the objective, which is reducing by half food losses in production and supply chains and the waste uh, per capita waste of food uh, before 2030. This is a huge challenge for governments and all the stakeholders in the agri-food system. FAO's strategy uh, aims to strengthen in this 2030 agenda through the transformation of agri-food systems for them to be more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable to achieve a better production, better nutrition, better environment, and a better life without leaving anyone behind. One of the approaches is a reduction of um, food loss and waste. Therefore, it poses a huge challenge. We're working on together with different countries to change agri-food systems. And the reductions will not only improve uh, food security and nutrition, but also it's it, we, ha we can have sustainable and resilient uh, agri-food systems. We're measuring the losses in the field, in the countryside, and the wholesaler market, thanks to these efforts uh, in the region. After uh, harvest, up to distribution, there is a 12% loss of food worldwide. Estimates show a 14%, which is about 7% of total emissions of greenhouse uh, effect gases and around 6% of the total use of water also accounts for 30% of the whole arable land uh, in the world. In, by 2020, there was a new approach in the measuring of uh, food loss and waste in the school and the in schools and recent experiences when we include gastronomy in, in, in some countries, for instance, we have had a very good results in reducing in reducing uh, wastes associated to the uh, uh, school menus in Colombia. There was a 20% reduction, which meant a decrease by 88 grams, the average per student per day. When estimating a potential scale uh, impact, there was a better use of uh, public resources. Thus, other countries are driving similar initiatives. We're also working with countries such as uh, Dominican Republic, uh, Guatemala, Chile, among others. These experiences are great steps uh, towards the transformation of our agri-food systems. And that's why today we'd like to learn other experiences 
related to innovation. A reduction of uh, food loss and waste requires rules, regulations, public policies, but also innovation. And therefore, we need a collaboration with the private sector, public sector, sciences, the academia, civil society, all those stakeholders in the agri-food system are, are, are instrumental for this challenge. Thus, in order to implement these solutions, we need different components, such as a measurement, uh, a monitoring and evaluation. Let me invite you to learn all these new experiences and have an exchange among the stakeholders and industries and the methodologies that may be used, as well as specific policies that will allow us to take a step forward into this huge uh, challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela, for those opening remarks. This seminar is being brought, is being streamed through FAO's YouTube channel and FAO America's Twitter accounts for the Spanish broadcast and FAO Caribbean account for the English uh, streaming. Uh, great, greetings uh, for all and all those who are following us. And we also invite you to share our your messages with the hashtag Perdida y desperdicio, sin desperdicio, food waste and soluciones. Every uh, day, millions of food rations are served in uh, states' uh, institutions. So what to do so that this big effort is not wasted? One of the starting points is quantify, monitor, identify critical points uh, where those wastes are generated. And today, we'll be sharing three experiences along those lines. To begin uh, the conversation, we'll have Sulma Fonseca. She's the nutrition director of the Colombian Institute of Family Director. So Sulma, welcome. You have eight minutes. I'll let you know when you have uh, two minutes before you finish. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure for us uh, being uh, with you in this webinar and sharing the experience we have from the Colombian Institute of Family Well in the development and in the beginning of the implementation of uh, prevention of uh, food loss and waste. Let me share my screen. Me confirma si ya lo están you let me know if you can actually see my screen. So uh, let me say that uh, we've been uh, working uh, in the development of a public policy to, to avoid food loss and waste. Of course, uh, focused on achieving the sustainable development goals, uh, especially production, uh, responsible consumption and production uh in order to reduce food loss and waste in our national plan our commitment was to have that uh, policy after law 1990 of 2019 it's a pleasure for me to share that on march the 14th uh, there was a decree issued in order to prevent uh, food loss and waste in colombia where we are driving actions in order to re to, for reduction, also human consumption, using of organic resources and renewable energies and an animal uh, food component. From our institute, we focus our actions in these uh, first uh, three uh, pillars. This process is important because the uh, food uh, uh, supplementation of the ICBF aims at providing the children, especially in the early uh, ages, uh, healthy, uh, healthy food with the energy and, and nutrients uh, contribution based on these uh, food guidelines we have in the country. We are now implementing starting this year a menu with the greater contribution of proteins, uh, more uh, vegetables and fruits, and less sugar and processed uh, food. Our institute is one of the main organizations buying uh, food, distributing uh, uh, food uh, as part of uh, its responsibilities. And let me say here that for rations, uh, 
per day. We're talking about 19,000 tons per year of uh, cereals, roots, uh, banana, 55,000 tons of milk and dairy products, 40,000 tons of uh, mead, eggs, and, and 70,000 tons of fruits and vegetables. And the same is true for rations to be prepared, those packages or those kits which are offered in some peculiar uh, 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 cases. So it's a big amount of tons where we have to guarantee a proper care and proper management to prevent uh, food uh, loss. We're also working along with uh, actions of circular economy with the using of a material composting. Uh, and uh, one element that we also consider key for the process in order to have these uh, short uh, trading uh, circuits, which are public procurement. Uh, we, we buy local supplies uh, and uh, also we will be one of the main contributors to the uh, uh, food loss waste uh, measuring system. Our goal is to measure and prevent uh, food waste and the different services of our institute through management strategies and sustainable operation of those processes with the supplementing, with the, supplementing uh, the food supplementing. We have a very well structured model we'll work together with FAO who have, have given us technical support involving two key elements. And let me we have uh, a measurement, a measuring component and a prevention component. And this first component, measuring, we want to see what are the reasons uh, for food loss and what steps uh, before reaching the end beneficiary, we find those causes and what are the quantities using uh, quantitative, quantitative uh, methods uh, and uh, mixed uh, measuring uh, methods and uh, prevention from the results of a plan offering the specific uh, measurement of uh, causes, critical points, quantities where we will have a key element of action. So for food education, nutritional education, and certain adjustments in the operation of our service. This is the module for served rations. So, uh, we have, uh, if it's already pre-served or rations of, to be prepared. So what are we looking for? First, we need to identify the situation of the generation of wastes in each one of the centers. We collect disaggregated information on the origin of waste uh, through the direct measurement find out about those causes, uh, what are the critical points, and then apply perception scale from the point of view of the recipients uh, to determine wastes, causes, and therefore keep a record of what are the amount of uh, waste. In this measurement component, we have eight steps. Uh, from the moment the food arrives are procured by the operator and those that will be used in each uh, serving up to the specific report on, on uh, food losses in consumption. We have a team here with nutritionists, uh, uh, those who conduct the supervision, uh, management, preparation of food, and the recipients, the beneficiaries who are the key elements in the process. In order to for, for, for rations to, to rations to be prepared, we need to identify the situation of waste for the operation of this uh, ration, to have information on the origin of the waste, to identify critical points, measurement, acceptability of rations, and then define what are the processes for storage, assembly, packaging, distribution. And uh, we have a fortified food, which is uh, offered uh, for free to double check if we have uh, food losses or waste. And then we have this measuring once again from the moment the food element is procured, uh, reporting on storage, assembly, preparation. Thank you. You have only one minute left all the way down to the servings. And then after this identification, we need prevention. We have an action plan with each one of the serving service units to identify critical points. And then we focused on actions uh, for food education, 
or want to make changes in the behavior, improving consumption, from, uh, including uh, uh, fruits and vegetables. So those are the critical aspects in, 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 in the lost, uh, food loss and waste. Improve the uh, strategies, uh, uh, defining specific actions, uh, make changes in the operation of rations uh, by the operator that will improve the handling and pr procurement and storage of food and also a process of articulation with the territorial uh, uh, organizations to to uh, find out about uh, availability of food managing of local procurement and help uh, prevention of these uh, food lost and waste. We need to properly implement uh, this model and promote uh, for our operators to follow each one of the steps and to have the quant to coordinate the actions with all the levels, uh, apply the critical path and the procedures and the follow-up of the plan. And these will be a very important tool in order to measure food consumption for uh, sustainable and healthy diets. And of course, this is uh, a key to have an important uh, component for strengthening all the technical teams. We are in the uh, later stages of validation, dissemination. We have implementation pilot projects of the model. And this year, we'll start with implementation, full implementation of different services, which I said serve nearly 1,800,000 uh kids uh, thank you thank you uh sulma for your presentation really the, the the potential is huge implementing a tool of this nature to improve the efficiency of the service uh, in, uh, in colombia and in your institute now uh we use uh, in these experiences uh, we'll have uh, maria esmeralda Gerard, is the uh, this is the, the, from the Nicaraguan Technological uh, Institute. Uh, uh, you have eight minutes. Uh, two minutes before you finish, I'll let you know. Okay. Thank you and good morning. Greetings from Nicaragua, from the National Tech. It's really important for us to be part of this activity that will allow us to share the experiences we have as a country on uh, a process uh, we have on the evaluation of causes and the quantification of uh, wastes especially in uh, food uh, services and the different technology centers in this organization well we began this uh, process with, uh, together with fao and the general objective uh, was to evaluate the main causes and quantities of waste in the food uh, sector, dealing with the uh, preparation of strategies to minimize waste, which are, uh, to, 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 it, it, we have 10 technology centers uh, uh, throughout Nicaragua. And these are very valuable resources. The specific uh, goal was to quantify uh, these uh, waste and how we determine the main causes, how we analyze them and to put together an action plan. Let me share with you that uh, as INA Tech, the national tech, we uh, rule technical and um, professional education in the country. We are in 45, we have 45 tech centers. We offer free technical uh, education and uh, we have uh, 66 uh, technical programs in the different uh, industry, trade uh, services, uh, uh, forestry, industry construction. We also have uh, different training programs uh, for the enabling supplementation and specialization. We have uh, 412 of these programs and 10 uh, tech centers for, uh, for hospitality and tourism and uh, in the boarding uh, uh, format. As part of our method uh, in this evaluation process, we conduct, we 
applied 179 uh, instruments to measure wastes, uh, specifically uh, um, for measuring in 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 food uh, would this uh, technique uh, led to a uh, uh, quality and quantitative analysis has to do with follow-up counting of uh, servings or uh, rations uh, for each one of the uh, of the segment as we said we have 10 technology centers that uh, offer uh, uh, these uh, programs on on uh, on hospitality gastronomy restaurant services and uh, from here we have 19 tech centers uh, with uh, the sort of a boarding school and and so as to guarantee uh, food uh, uh, breakfast uh, uh, and and dinner so there we can measure and quantify waste we conduct we conducted 10 focus groups, we conducted uh, interviews, these, uh, we have 12 of these uh, hospitality uh, training centers, 2,906 students and 8,718 servings and, and, uh, per day. So this uh, evaluation process uh, has uh, is very important as to how to measure, how to go ahead and improve uh, out of uh, national domestic policies. Uh, we have the policy of food security. This is an approach of our of our government on food policy. And as uh, as uh, the national tech, we're part of these process. The sample taken, it was uh, during 30 days uh, to collect data uh, per these uh, tech centers, uh, two uh, hospitality centers, eight, uh, eight uh, uh, centers, uh, those that prepare the, 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 do the preparation of the rations of the servings. And um, those are the, the 10 centers of the sample. Some of the selection parameters uh, they have to do with uh, uh, the geography, uh, 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 geographic representation at the country level. We have some uh, segments that have to do with the food uh, chain, with storage preparation, of food services, availability of resources for the application of the methodology. As part of the results we achieved to, uh, to, in, in this process, which is that we have a, an index of a food waste uh, specifically uh, that has to do or dealing with the storage, 3.01% for preparation, which is the process uh, out of its tax services in its tech uh, centers, I mean done by students and during their training and, um, uh, and, and those boarding schools, those working these boarding schools. In preparation, we have a 11.37% waste rate. And the other thing is uh, services, which is a 5.69% rate of waste. So the highest is uh, in preparation. It's an 11.37%. That's where the action plan is going to be focused. And that's why we're co coordinating with FAO. Okay, that, that's how we measure the, the waste uh, rate uh, or index. Uh, we also have one for human consumption and animal consumption, which accounts for 8.29%. And in actual rate, uh, it's 11.79%. Uh, As part of the achievement, so we can uh, emphasize and focus, uh, uh, focus on the fact that we're building an action plan to reduce waste by analyzing the results. We build up a problem solving tree and the preparation of the specific result matrix. This is the solution proposal. Those are means, equipment, labor, roles uh, uh, from their personal uh, individual skills, methods, materials, and means uh, uh, used in the process. We also have uh, 
what, what to, okay what do we do once uh, we have the once we achieve these results immediately there will be a technical assistance on the methodologies uh, for those who are working uh, in the preparation and consumption of healthy and sustainable food, an action plan to reduce waste and an impact. Once these is applied in order to mitigate the, 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 the these uh, uh, an impact, uh, to mitigate the impact of waste with environmental, economic and food security uh, approach. And we will be uh, uh, strengthening the skills for life, social, cognitive, emotional skills, so that we can go ahead in these activities. Okay, that's uh, the end of my presentation. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, thank you from Nicaragua. Besides the public sector, the private sector has also taken action in this area and the commitment to reduce food losses and waste. Now we have an experience that facilitates a reduction of, of a food waste from food services through a very interesting technological tool. To share about it, I will give the floor to Stephen Fien. He is a VP Sustainability and Public Affairs with uh, Lean Path, who will make his presentation in English. Uh, thank you, Stephen, for your availability. And uh, you have the floor. You have eight minutes for your presentation. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Uh, exciting to be here on this important topic of uh, moving towards a more sustainable public food services. Um, let me tell you a little bit here about what we do with uh, at Lean Path. We are a certified B Corporation uh, headquartered in Oregon. We have offices in the UK and China. We're in 40 sites around the world, focusing on food waste prevention efforts. Um, so our mission is to make food waste prevention and measurement everyday practice in the world's kitchens. Um, we are cutting waste, inspiring clients, and changing cultures to make food waste prevention a part of organizational DNA in those locations. And as I think everyone on this call knows, reducing food waste really matters. Food is at the center of all the sustainable development goals, and as a result, food waste reduction is as well. As everyone knows, we are well into the decade of action here, and we are off track. Um, so we're at this inflection point in the food system. Transforming the food system is essential to reining in climate change, uh, global greenhouse gas emissions, driving climate change, and food waste reduction is one of the best uh, tools that we have to address that. Um, we work in the hospitality and the food service sector, which produces about 26% of greenhouse gases uh, around the world. Um, so it's essential to address that uh, area. Um, we um, often find a number of uh, causes for food waste in these uh, locations. You can see several of them here. And a core uh, reason is, is an effort to um, use excess food to manage risk in those operations. There's a lot of overproduction uh, for many reasons, um, over merchandising, um, we like the appearance of bountiful buffets, so all kinds of reasons that lead to a lot of excess food and food service operations and a lot of waste as well. Um, so we come to organizations and help them by implementing food waste prevention solutions. This is the highest um, point of impact in the food waste uh, recovery hierarchy. Um, and the way to do that is to focus on daily measurement to reduce that waste, prevent it from occurring. So there's, this is your difficult times for food service right now. The current reality is that costs are up. There's an unsteady recovery. We have historic labor shortages, which are adding a lot of pressure to food service organizations. And at the same time, consumers are demanding more sustainable practices from them, right? Um, financially, let's start with that. These are big operations which reduce, uh, produce billions of meals around the globe daily. Um, and as I said, there's a lot of waste and efficiency is really demanded here. Um, you know, typically, a typical food service operation wastes between four and 10% of the food it purchases. So if you think about that, if you have a million dollar food spend month, uh, annually, you're wasting anywhere between 40,000 and 100,000 dollars annually. Um, right now, of course, that wasted food is even more expensive with the high inflation we're seeing. Um, and also the labor uh, used to produce that uh, food is also more expensive. So as a result, that's another drag on the bottom line. And as I said at the, um, at the start as well, 
Um, consumers are expecting more from food service operations in terms of being more responsible. And the food waste climate connection, of course, is undeniable. Um, the food system produces about one third of uh, greenhouse gas emissions globally. So really important to reduce um, food waste in food service operations to address the climate connection. Um, the good news for food service operations amid all these challenges is that they can take control of their food waste. They can cut costs and save anywhere from two to eight uh, percent of food purchases with Lean Path. They can engage staff uh, and help uh, employees to find meaning in their work and they be can become more resilient as well. So one thing I just wanted to say as well, this is really a time for action. It's a time for leadership from all of us, but especially from leaders in the food sector um, to make bold commitments to food waste reduction in accordance with target 12.3 and to implement prevention programs um, that can help drive that uh, reduction and to engage in transparent re reporting uh, to uh, stick with that. And in so doing, they can achieve triple bottom line benefits, cutting costs, uh, increasing benefits for the environment and uh, increasing social benefits as well. So how do we do that? We focus on shifting from diversion to prevention in food service operations. That is the point of maximum impact, as we said, uh, and enables these organizations to reduce purchases and reduce all of those embedded costs associated with food, um, preventing the environmental in uh, weight, uh, impacts of food waste from the start of the production process by uh, not producing it in the first place uh, through prevention. Um, we do this by making food waste visible in operations. Um, typically, and for many years and decades, food waste has been invisible in operations, although it's been very high and very costly, and it hasn't been a safe point of discussion. So we make that a safe point of discussion. We bring a point of focus to it, uh, and we help organizations um, see it by making it visible. Um, food waste has typically been challenging for food service operations, too. We hear many things about having uh, it be difficult to measure, cumbersome to analyze the data, and hard to engage staff. And those are things that we address too. Uh, we make this easy with a three-step process that we call track, discover, and drive. We track waste in seconds. Um, we enable operators to discover the prevention opportunities through the data that's captured. And we enable them to drive results through behavior change uh, functionality as well. So this is a proven process to reduce waste. As you can see here, we have a suite of trackers um, from lightweight tablets to bench scale units with photography to floor scale solutions, all designed to fit the needs of uh, kitchens of all sizes and enable them to implement this process of food waste prevention very easily. Um, in so doing, the tracking process provides instant impact. Uh, the staff can see the impacts of food waste transactions immediately upon completion. They can see the dollar costs. They can see the environmental impact of those transactions. Um, they can immediately glean insights uh, in, in terms of data that they can act upon because now they can see the impact of those transactions. They can understand the causes and what's generating them and they can take action to reduce them in the present and to prevent them going forward. Um, we use photos to amplify the impact of that data because as we know, uh, pictures are worth a thousand words. And so these are very uh, impactful to chefs and operators in the food service space. They can look at these pictures and immediately um, understand opportunities for reduction and prevention in their, in their operation. Uh, and we also help them to go beyond that, uh, to analyze that data and a number of our software helps identify large uh, significant food waste opportunities through uh, various reporting functionality and dashboards that are very impactful. Um, we have goal functionality. We help organizations to set goals to reduce specific items. We have alert features that highlight um, specific transactions that chef operators would like to see. So if they want to see all cases of uh, waste of filet mignon or lobster or things like that, they'll get an alert when one of those transactions is processed and they can have an intervention conversation with someone in the operation to investigate how to prevent that from happening again. Um, we also help them to engage consumers through our post-consumer tracking functionality called Spark. So they can engage in consumer uh, help engage in consumer food waste as well by educating their patrons. And we help them to engage and retain staff by connecting frontline food service um, workers to this key role in addressing the global food waste challenge. So we inspire the staff as well um, through the organization's authentic commitment to food waste reduction. So just to sum up here, 
Uh, prevention is really important for food service operators right now. It can't happen without measurement. Um, so you need to implement a daily measurement practice. And uh, from that daily measurement, you gain the data insights that are critical for change. Um, and in so doing, those measurable benefits that you get, you can cut your food waste in half, you can take back two to 8% of your purchasing costs, um, you get more uh, engagement from your uh, labor force, you cut your company's food um, carbon pr uh, footprint. And this isn't really a cost, it's an investment in savings because you're getting an ROI of anywhere from two to seven X. So um, we've been doing this for about 18 years. You can see some of the global impact figures we have here in terms of you know, 42 million kilos of food waste prevented across the globe, 72 mil million meals saved, billions of gallons of liters of water saved, and 291,000 metric tons of CO2 emissions saved. So very uh, impactful work and hope that you can join us in uh, making food waste prevention everyday practice in the world's kitchens. Thank you. Well. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias, Steven. Realmente muy interesante el trabajo que hacen. Thank you, Steven, very much. Uh, it's it's really very interesting everything you do at Lean Path, and and uh, we hope to be able to have some those kinds of tools for helping our public services uh, organizations with whom we're working. All three presentations have been very, very useful and very interesting. So now let's open up the forum and Q&A session here with Catalina, who is our technical director for the uh, sustainable value chains as who is going to be moderating this session. We have three questions for each panelist. Catalina. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for your presentations. It has been very interesting to listen to each one of you. And first of all, let me ask you first, what has been the role, uh, because you mentioned uh, your role in the public, in public service in Colombia, and how have you actually, Soma, uh, has this public policy uh, driven the implementation of the programs that you are mentioning in the uh, uh, food services? Can you help us? Uh, Thank you. Well, as we mentioned, we are the technical secretariat of the intersectorial committee for the food services and nutrition services and so we had a sub a, a sub table uh, configured with the national planning uh, department to define the food waste and we've seen this as an opportunity so just as we were building the policies in 1990 we took made the decision to continue to move forward in our model for prevention of uh, food wastes. And so uh, we have the army on board and we have the program for uh, school uh, food services and other institutions. And the fact that we are very close, closely working with, uh, with policymakers, we have the possibility to make headway, important headway in this innovation pro process and the policy and the decree was signed on 14 March. And so we're ready to move forward in the with the implementation. And so this is a very important accomplishment and it's a model that we will be able to share with other entities that will now be interested in, in doing the same thing. And so we hope to have the best results and of course link this to the policy making processes such as the pro public procurement for foods which is very fundamental, as you can imagine. Well, thank you very much, Sulma. And now let's hear Maria Esmeralda, who has a very marvelous experience and very diverse and with many players involved. And so we would like to ask you, Maria, what advice would you like to share with us or lessons learned that you would like to share with the other countries that are right now beginning with this measurement work, identifying the causes, where, where should, what should be the starting point? What would you share with other countries? Well, this is an important and unique uh, work and a task at the hand that is right on the table for us. And this is a situation that we have been uh, going through worldwide. And uh, now we have a peak, reached a peak and we are understanding the, the, the importance of waste and food waste. And I would like to mention firstly, that we need to start the review and evaluation and assessment process so that in those spaces where we have a certain uh, 
food processes and service food service processes and where we could actually measure the different uh, the, the the waste and because many times we just cannot quantify it or do not quantify it and so we have to look here and there but once we have the big picture well then that is important then we see how it, how important the waste is and so first thing is invite people to start the process we started this experience and this has enabled us to uh, prepare an action plan and that was based on that first assessment where we could quantify which is the main thing because once you quantify then you realize as an institution as a country as a person as well where we have to go to, toward the direction in which we need to go and that is my invitation to all of you and it is a very beautiful experience and of course this allows us to generate uh, new forms, new uh, ways of measuring, of preserving, conserving, and sharing most of all, and to generate the consciousness, the awareness in each person who is involved in this process. So, well, thank you very much, Maria Esmeralda. Very nice experience in Nicaragua. And so, Steve, now we have one question for you. This is very, very, very interesting the expectation that we could have in order to implement this technology you've mentioned and also your results are very important so steve the question for you is is there any specific vision for the impact so that we can implement this on a regional level and on this we would like to emphasize about how this technology is oriented towards public food services can you please uh, let us know thank you Yes, thank you. Um, great question. As I said at the start, you know, our our vision, our mission is to make food waste prevention everyday practice in the world's kitchens. Um, we have the tools to do that to enable the change that we're talking about here. Um, and I think the really interesting thing is that we have, uh, we should just recognize the drivers. We have all of these great, um, both global and national drivers, providing incentive to uh, engage in food waste prevention, food waste reduction technologies uh, in public uh, and private food sector operations. And so I think we just need to uh, embrace those drivers and, um, and act. We talked, I mentioned in the, uh, in the talk about uh, the need for leadership to kind of activate these drivers. Uh, and I think that's probably the most important thing that we, that we need in the public sector right now is, is leadership and prompting just authentic action in organizations to, to make that bold commitment to food waste reduction in line with target 12.3 of the SDGs, in line with national goals that flow from 12.3 um, and really uh, commit and, and engage in authentic action and back that action up with transparent results. I think that's a, a really important way to get this going. Um, and we, we talk about this and you know, it's, it's, more, it's important to set that goal, but it's important to act too. We refer to this as closing the commitment gap, closing the measurement gap. Um, so I think all the drivers are here. I think both in public and private operations, we just need um, leaders to step up, make those commitments to food waste production and, and act and back up those actions with transparent reporting so everyone can see what's happening. Muchísimas gracias a los, a los tres invitados. Eh, thank you very much to all three guest speakers. I think we will continue now with our agenda and thank you very much once again. Muchísimas gracias, eh, Catalina. Thank you, Catalina. And as we had, eh, we still have a little time left. Um, we have two questions from the chat, coming from the chat. One, which we could actually ask Zulma to take on this question this is related to the the equipment or uh, the, the teams and the type of members in the teams the profile of the team members to know the kind of people who will be uh, effective here could this be engineer engineers food engineers or what is your suggestion in terms of the technical team members that should be involved in these kinds of activities soma you have the floor Thank you. We have an interdisciplinary team. And so for measuring, the nutritionist uh, role is very important because they design the minutes and the implementation process and the management of the foods. Those who manipulate foods also, they are the ones who actually have direct contact with those foods that are being served. 
and so also the, on the prevention component, we have a team, I think we lost the sound, the support team. These are the educational agents. And we also have some uh, nurses, assistant nurses, and we have other people who will be also promoting the adequate consumption of foods and educate people about that. And so we also have the food engineers. We have some very interesting controls, very strict controls, and that's where they play an important role in the, the elaboration process of the, with the, of the raw materials that arrive. And so, for instance, wheat, soy, corn, dairy, and milk. So we have some controls there where the food engineers are very involved. But in general, the idea is to have a commitment from all the players, all of the, the members of this interdisciplinary team for all the different areas of the service. Thank you very much, Suma. Thank you, Catalina, for uh, moderating this uh, webinar and all of you guests for this wonderful exchange. Definitely, there are many opportunities to scale this at the regional level and considering the potential of work that we have, we have invited Cat Cat Carolina, who is um, our, uh, will giving will be offering finally her final comments and thank you welcome Carolina thank you sir it's wonderful to be here with you at this session as you have uh, very well said in all of your presentations the space to use and generate better innovation on this topic is already on the table and we need to actually uh, move forward and faster. I think there are three areas that you have mentioned uh, very clearly. Uh, so, and we can still use more and better information. There's room for that. First of all, to measure what we don't measure, what we don't follow up, what we don't monitor will not allow us to uh, really have the, the full dimension of the problem and to make, take action uh, if we cannot monitor, of course. So there is, in fact, uh, the the intact uh, allows uh, is is using traditional methods and applying them and also is uh, they are applying very lighter methods like using photographies and qualitative methodologies that complement the quantitative and the, the qualitative and the quantitative are complementary and this is an innovation that is gaining ground for instance to benefit communities to prevent uh, food waste in their uh, community uh, uh, spaces and their households and so on. So that is at the full society level. And so again, the other aspect is the chains, right? The supply and production chains. And so the important thing is that we need to be able to identify the link of the chain in this food process and this where to find which is the, the part the, where we're generating the greatest risk and the greatest amounts of loss and waste to be able to find innovation that will allow us to prevent and to reduce the uh, the loss and the waste. And the third area for innovation that is there up for grabs is uh, the one that has to do with when we actually do waste and we do lose uh, foods to identify, to be able to identify ways of reusing that as the, our colleagues from the INTEC were mentioning, uh, you know, for rather for, for compost, for animal feed and whatever. And this is very important because we need to identify the potential uses and possible uses, but moreover, the, the business models to allow these inputs to become very, to, to be valuable and accessible and to uh, become aware of that, and uh, that these foods that have been lost or wasted can be actually used in a productive way. And so analyzing the links of the preventative chains and the use of which, what something that has already become a loss or a waste, these are very important spaces for innovation. And so we have three types of innovation that uh, have been given here in the examples are already on the table. We all uh, know that the innovation efforts need to be made to improve information schemes, education, awareness of amongst and between all of the actors of this chain. And now we can even uh, disseminate this on a massive level. And that is very important, a component, especially when we discuss public policy. And a second area, that is key here, that is gaining ground, 
is not just because of its of its low cost, but because of its immediate effect, and that is applying these uh, learnings derived from the behavioral sciences. And of course, there you can find a very large innovation space to be able to change our ways of doing things, of communicating, of promoting things, how to incentivate and motivate. And that, of course, provides some important aggregate value, aggregate value. And so we need a look at the integration of horizontal and vertical of the different into integration of the different inter industries that are in this business of food services and food chain and this is the where the um, the entrepreneurs are coming to play they can generate new business models and they this has a very important innovative potential and so they have a role to play and i would like to end my remarks by may mentioning that we need to generate innovation that is adaptive, that is, that can be adaptive, that we can measure the losses and waste of foods or to reuse the loss and wasted foods. And for that, that these need to be adapted to the different chains that generate loss and waste. Of course, as you, as the re, as you mentioned, the restaurants, the kitchens around the world that generate a lot of servings and rations, public programs, whether national, regional, community level, whatever. Uh, they, but also, other there are two other groups that we need to bear in mind that are very important that are rather a little more complex but are fundamental for reaching our goal of a, an ecosystem without uh, loss and uh, waste of course the households right the homes the domestic the household practices and the the um, the groceries and the wholesale and retail markets of grocery markets they are another element who contribute very substantively to the substantially to the loss and, and waste and that's where we need to adapt to that whatever we have learned from restaurants and cooks and kitchens and all of that gastronomy programs and all of that uh, school uh, food services and programs we need to uh, all of that that we have learned there we need to transform translate that or transfer that to these markets local markets to be able to have a greater impact on a greater scale i end by mentioning that our innovation is of course implies much more technology much more behavioral sciences knowledge and of course more apps and more applications ways of doing things but of course that we need political and institutional innovation sometimes through changing the way our public and private institutions actually are relating them one with one another that's how we can actually reach a goal the goal of reducing in a sustainable way in a large scale all of these loss and waste in foods uh, thank you very much for this very interesting conversation. Thank you, Carolina, very much for your final comments. I believe that this actually does um, uh, include all of the comments that we have uh, mentioned and heard here. Thank you, our panelists, and thank you, our guest speakers, and all those of you who are with us right now. This seminar has been uh, broadcast through FAO's YouTube channel, which will be available for consultation and dissemination. And additionally, we invite you to visit our FAO website, where you can find publications and links of interest to the other webinars held and as well as specialized newsletters to the all of the participants who accompanied us today thank you very much thank you for joining this community without waste where food is life thank you